Hello again. At this point, I'll be presenting to you the features and functionalities on how to navigate the Deep Data Database. We'll begin by providing you with a, a short, we'll begin by providing you with a short background on the Deep Data Database. This will be followed by demonstrations on the user interface, the block history feature, the layers tab, the search tab, the library tab, the docs tab, the uploads tab, and finally, the downloads tab. For the background, the Deep Data Database has been designed with three personas in mind. These personas are our roles within the Deep Data Systems. The personas include the contractors, members of the Legal and Technical Commission, data managers or members of the data team within the Secretariat, and the members of the public. From a technical basis, the Deep Data Database sits on virtual infrastructure. It is designed on the Django web application. The database itself, or the database engine, is Microsoft SQL Server. And for spatial components, we're using Ezra's ArcGIS platform. As it relates to the data types, there is structured data, unstructured data, and spatial data. What is structured data, you might ask? Structured data is directly queryable data or numbers that can be compared, uh, information, for instance, like taxonomic data, that you can directly download from the database or extract and do quick and easy comparisons. Unstructured database on the other hand include things like files, images, uh, zip files for shape files, uh, for instance, documents. Anything of that nature will be categorized as unstructured data. And then there's a spatial data where we try to georeference all the components so you'll realize that we have created the coordinates and the blocks for each and every contract area. We have also, we're in, where possible showed the exact location on the map where, for instance, samples would have been taken. We have on the map, we've shown the areas of particular environmental interest. We've shown several other features on the map that are spatial related. Now let's get right into the demonstration. To access the website, you go to data.isa.org.jl. Once you navigate to the website, you're then presented with the terms and conditions, copyright and privacy statement of the International Student Authority. You simply need to click accept to move on and begin utilizing the database. The default view of the database is the current encrypted and factor zone. Once you log on to the database, you will see the CCFZ and the nine APIs surrounded by the contract areas for the nodules contracts in that area. For the website, you can zoom out and in as you so desire. To pan the map, you simply click and pull the desired location or area. If at any point you become lost on the map or you want to go back to the CCFZ, you simply click the home button and it will carry you back to the CCFZ. We've also provided a few widgets at the side that enables additional functionalities and features of the website. I will start by showing you the simple home button. Just like before, once you click this home button, it takes you back to the default view within the CCFZ as your reference point from which you can then navigate to any other location on the map. We will then look at additional features and functionalities that can be enabled within this tab. We can enable additional point samples, line samples, and on the base map, we can enable points related to additional features. I will enable a few of these so that you can see the difference on the map. Once enabled, we realize that a lot more data points have been, have been presented with several additional features, lines, and location. 
So to find out what all this means, we then go to the legend widget here. This provides a description of the various different objects that you see now presented on your maps. A key feature also is the bathymetric aspect of the legend. You'll see here that various different depths have been ha highlighted by the different lines. I'll now proceed to do, I'll now proceed to demonstrate the block history component of the data website. You may have noticed that various different blocks are shaded slightly darker than others. What this means is that there is a slight overlay on the blocks. Each overlay represents the historic component of the block. So I'll click a few and then we can have an idea of what is going on with each one. So this block is for the Coke Islands contract. This is an exploration block and its current status is exploration. We also have a block ID. And this deck, the last activity on this block was dated July 14, was dated July 14, 2016. Subsequent to that, the block was marked as reserve following the issuance of the GSR's contract. The activity date related to that is January 13, 2013. We therefore get an idea of when the GSR's contract was approved and also when the Coke Islands contract was also approved. Let's look at another block. This block has been marked as reserved for Korea since 2001. However, we realize that the existing status is exploration for Marawa since 2015. What this means is that this block was a part of the reserve area that was created at, during the application from Korea. Marawa subsequently the developing state applied for this block and thus the contract here is marked as exploration. I will now do a demonstration from the layers tab. To access the layers tab, you go to map options. Once you've gone into map options, the layers tab is the first thing that will greet you. What it presents to you is a list of all contracts. Further down, you are able to select contracts based on the status. So for instance, all the contracts that are, are currently active, all the contracts that are extended. Then you're able to select contracts based on the sponsoring state. You're able to select contracts based on the mineral type. And finally, you're able to select contracts based on the ocean within which these contracts are situated. Let me, however, point out the unique aspect of this layers tab and its interconnectivity with all other components of the deep data website. The layers tab, within the layers tab, only the contracts that you have turned on in this area will be represented in any other tab that we have. Therefore, if for instance, I have turned on only the Cork Islands contract, whenever I go into search or a library, I will be restricted to only the features, functionality, and data that is provided under the Cork Islands contract. Therefore, if for instance, I'm interested in data related to polymetallic sulfides. I'll then turn on the sulfides tab. This has an impact on all the previous contracts. So 
on the list of contracts, it will then turn on all contracts related to polymetallic sulfides. In like manner, if I turn on the contracts related to Germany, for instance, as a sponsoring state, this means that all contracts related to, that are sponsored by, the, by, the, by Germany will be highlighted and presented. And my search results, my library stuff, my documents, my downloads, anything else that is available on the map options is limited or restricted to only this area. The same applies for the oceans. Therefore, if I'm interested in only data related to the current trip and fracture zone, I turn on that ocean or that location better yet. And as a result, all the contracts within this area are then highlighted. It must also be pointed out that once you have selected a contract, if a contractor wants to go specifically to their contract here, then all that is needed to be done is to turn off all the other contracts and turn to your contract. The map will then immediately pan to that contract area, and you are therefore able to see only that contract. So for contractors, if you are interested in seeing your contract here in the data points under your contract, then this is the immediate solution for that. I will now move into and demonstrate search options. As stated before, everything is driven by the layers tab. Once you select the search tab, you're presented with biological or environmental chemistry information. For this demonstration, I will start biological data. I'm interested in point samples. I'm then presented with a few data types. You can run this query. The query has come back with some 76,000 records. In this case, because I'm interested in biological data, I will select export pivoted. This means that the data will be presented in a column manner. My download has been completed. I will then open the CSV file that was downloaded. I have opened this file at Microsoft Excel. And I'm now in a able to convert this file to a table by going Control A, Control T. This gives me easier manipulation of the data set. I realized that I have several contracts or data related to several different contracts within this data set. I have data related to each of the mineral types. have several different stations. And I have two different data types, matrix types, biological samples and sediment samples. The data ranges from 2010 up to 2018. For the purpose of demonstration, I'll, for instance, also now give an example of how to filter. So, I would like all the samples that actually are demonstrated or are 
classified under the species level. I therefore remove any records that have a blank in the species level. I'm now able to filter the, I'm sorry, that was a genus. I now have a much more refined data set that has been filtered down to the species level. And I can now perhaps do additional analysis on this data set. However, let's say I'm interested further in the relative abundance. I've therefore filtered my data set to get the specific records and to extract the data I want in the manner that I am specifically interested in. At this point, I can then utilize this data for whatever scientific purpose I may deem necessary. Remember once again, the information provided was driven by the data set or the contracts that were selected in the layers tab. If you would like to filter the data set further, you then need to remove contracts that are not in a specific area of interest, or you remove them from within the data set once you have come here using the filtering tools. I have now logged in as a member of the data management persona. It has enabled me to view the geological filter. The members of the Legal and Technical Commission will be able to see geological data related to all the contracts on the layers. The members of the contractor persona are only able to see geological data related to their contract. I'll now select geological data and present it with several different options. I am interested in this case in only metals. I run the query, the results are presented. I then export this thing. Geological data is presented in a columnar fashion. I have gone ahead and hide the results column. However, what I wanted to point out is that the records have been presented in a columnar fashion. Therefore, you will have the analysis and the results associated with each analysis. For metals, there are the categories. I can filter the part. That ends my demonstration on structured data using the search tab. I will now demonstrate the utilization of the, of the library tab. Once again, all data is retrieved by enabling the contracts of specific interest. You then come back to the library tab and select the theme of interest. In this case, I'm going to select raw data public. Now we realize that the structure or the layout here is not ideal for us to search. We therefore go down to this feature here, which is the column changer. We'll adjust it to find a specific files of interest to us. So I'm interested in the individual file name. So I can pull that one up. Having looked through and realized that that's the only record that I would be searching on or interested in looking at, then I need to go back in. OK, go back in. Now I'm able to get an idea of what these. Files represent. What I wanted to demonstrate here also is that I can use a search function here. So let's say I'm interested in zooplankton. I 
by time zoom, I refine the search for file names that have zooplankton or zoo in it. Here we have a raw reporting template file that was submitted by a contractor. With this, we can then just select the various different themes to navigate our way through this area. I will now present you the documents tab. Here we have a development version of the user manual for the new data website. As stated, the user manual will be adjusted and updated based on the feedback received from this workshop. I will allow you to read this document on your own time. We have the search results dictionary. One of the concerns we got from a lot of the users and the feedback we got from some users is that they didn't understand what the different columns and features and data type that was in the search results actually meant. We therefore downloaded and extracted a simple legend or a definition of these columns so that you could easily identify and understand what the different things meant. If at any point you have any doubt or you are, are concerned about what things on the website mean, then this is the document that you refer to. And finally, we have the current load library. What this is, is a quarterly representation of the load status or the loading of different files. Therefore, we can come here to identify the files that we are specifically interested in, and then go back to the library tab to download that specific file. Once we know the file details, that makes it much easier for us to search. The same goes for structured, well, the same goes for unstructured data. We're able to search and identify many different files that are available for download. This ends the demonstrations for the public persona. I will now demonstrate the features of the Uploads tab as a test contractor. Once you log in, as you would, some, some would have realized that I am logged in as a member of the Comra PMN team, and therefore I am able to see files that are related specifically to that contract and that contract only. Once you log in, you are able, to, it's pretty straightforward. You're able to now choose the file that you would like to upload. In this case, I will upload nodules exploration area file, shape file that I have here. That is a compressed shape file and select upload. Having done that, the file has been sent to the International Seabed Authority. You'll take note of the legend that is provided here. Once the greet, once the widget here is highlighted, this one being illuminated means that the file has been uploaded, reviewed, or archived by the Secretariat. The current status of this file is upload is successfully uploaded. I will now log in as a member of the administrative user group and make the necessary changes to this file so that it can be reviewed by ISA. Now the file has been reviewed by members of the Secretariat and has now passed the ISA review. When the contractor logs back in, he'll realize that the status of this file has been updated and the file has now been labeled as passing ISA review. The next step is to have this file archived. Now the Secretariat would have to run necessary procedures to have this loaded as unstructured data and available for download on the website. 
once again, let me point out that the file would only be downloadable to the Comra payment contract users or members of the legal and technical commission and the data managers persona. Members of the public will not be able to see the file if it's a confidential file. If it's a public file, then once it's archived, it can be downloaded directly from the website. That ends the presentation on the Uploads tab. What we've done in the Downloads tab is to provide you with a list of files that may be useful to the contractors or to users of the database system. So in this case, for my example, I was logged in as the Comer PMN user. What I can do now is that I can download a shapefile specifically related to this Comer PMN user. I now have available the shapefile for the Comer contract error. If I wanted any other shapefiles, I could have easily downloaded these files. There are also re reporting template guidance documents, and this is where we will also upload the latest versions of the files for the reporting templates and the guidance documents. Thank you very much for joining the presentation. I'll now hand back over to the co-chair and moderators.